Hoo hoo everybody. It's time for the long awaited and long procrastinated episode of the class system of the Head Weavers. I'm Joanne Nunchan. I write web fiction. Check it out. All right. What are the Set Weavers? Set Weavers stands for Central Tank Virtual Worlds. This is the virtual reality game of the company Central Tank. The company Central Tank and Set Weavers are both products of my imagination, and you can read about it in the story Auntie Toasts, the Via MMORPG. And the Via MMORPG in question is the Set Weavers. So, what is a class system? In RPGs, role play games, classes are the jobs the heroes have, like warrior is a class or mage is a class. Selecting a class is a very important step in every RPG. In the Zed Weavers, you don't select your class in character creation. You gain classes while playing and you can have multiple classes. So let's go first over the main branches. Um, the branches in the set viewers are something like the categories and you will see um, these are the standard classes nearly every RPG has. Of course you need uh, warriors, they specialize in fighting, then you got mages, they can do magic, like elemental magic or kinetic magic. I, I, and I'll show you the Google images for mages and um, I'm pretty disappointed. I mean, old guy, Robert Mages. Okay, that's a quite a cool name. <laughs> Trickster is the branch for roughs, thieves, everybody who uses more agility and dexterity to obtain their goals. Then we've got Tech. The uh, Mecha Warrior are in this branch. Drone Drivers. Here's the example, a normal driver. Next branch is Divine. Priest is the most common. Monk, Paladin, all fall in the Divine branch. Nature or Survival, I I think I may have used both <laughs> words. I'm not sure about what will stay. Here I used uh, nature. We are here in the chapter 31 of the story on Titos the Via MMORPG and you can find most information about classes in chapter 31. Crafter, very important class for the story. People who build things. Alchemists, of course, potions, but mechanics, engineers, technicians, tailors for clothing, social. I was very conflicted about um, bringing social in, but otherwise I wouldn't have a good branch for something like a merchant or for many of the artists like dancer. I mean, you can a painter, you can stick it under crafting, but it's a social as well and dancers. I mean, phew, maybe trickster. You can put merchant under trickster as well, but I think their reputation is bad enough. Why, why put them in a branch with a ill-reputated name? Okay, trickster is more cute than ill-reputated. I don't know. And uh, meter, that's the branch that can be combined with all classes or branches. An example for this is pupil. You can be a uh, pupil in tech or you can be a novice priest or you can be a page of a knight. Oh, I never noticed that 
page is a word with two meanings in English. Okay, am I, I mean the little guys knights have to lick their boots and uh, shiny up their armors. Let's look at one of the classes. He is a shield warrior. It's of the branch warrior. When you acquire the class, you get a passive and the passives are usually bonuses to the training of the skills. You've got two active bonuses. Active means if the class is active, you get those bonuses. We come to later when a class gets activated and when it gets uh, deactivated. This is a bonus for shield skills and bonus for blocking skills. Every combat class has five standard skills. That's one uh, single target attack, one area of effect attack. Area of effect attacks are attacks on multiple targets. A defensive skill, a movement skill, and a signature skill. The signature skill is something cool. <laughs> so if you see someone do the signature skill of a class, you know, ah, he probably got this class. So for uh, shield warriors, the single target attack is a shield bash. The warrior bashes with its shield, yeah. Shield cyclone is he spins around with his shield and hits people around him, the enemies around him. Shield wall is that his uh, shield will get transformed into a wall and blocks everything in front of him. Battering ram, he moves with speed towards and targets and bashes it or smashes it with its shield like a battering ram. Living shield, that everybody in his surrounding gets shielded from everything. So we start at the top. What are the branches of the Zetrivos? Next, we've got the passive. You get this as soon as you acquire the class. It counts whether the class is active or non-active. It counts anytime. The passives are usually training bonuses. In my story, the skills have uh, skill levels, the abilities have levels, everything has levels, <laughs> and everything has ratings. You train the skills up, you train the levels of the skills up. How easy it is to level something depends on the training efficiency modifier. This means basically you faster train the ability shield. Next is the active slot or category. So we spoke about that you can have multiple classes and you can switch these classes around and you can combine these classes. I think we will continue at how you can build your build. <laughs> A character build or skill build or trust build is the combination of bonuses you want to acquire to have a viable character to play. Many games like World of Warcraft got a skill tree where you can lay focus on certain aspects of a profession or character class. In this game, the build is getting related classes that you get rounded out character. So you see shield warrior, you've got only skills pertaining to shields. But humans got two hands, so maybe you've got a sword in the other hand, an axe or a mace. So you want to have skills for your other hand as well, so you get a second class like Sword Warrior. Sword Fighter or Sword Master, the same for your preferred uh, weapon type. In this game, you combine classes for your build. And of course, there are rules to combining classes. Alright, so you can combine classes. Here are some terms for these classes according to their combinatory ability. A precursor class is a class that comes before a class. 
like Hunter, is a precursor for Ranger. The class Ranger connects to Hunter and Hunter connects to Ranger, yeah? But Hunter is a part of Ranger. Like, if you want to be a good Ranger, you have to know a bit about the woods, like botany. You should be able to survive in the woods. So you've got survival abilities and you should be able to do the hunting in your area. Hunter or botanist are precursor classes for ranger and connect to ranger. Successor class, class that follows a class. In uh, the case before, a ranger is a successor class to hunter. And here we've got another example like drone driver is a successor class to driver so you don't have to have all the precursor classes if you want to learn a class take paladin paladin has two precursors knight and priest but you don't have to learn knight and priest you can just go to paladin school and learn paladin but you can combine knight and priest to paladin. So a combination class is a class that has multiple precursor classes. An umbrella class is a class that includes all classes of a specific specified kind. Maybe specific would be better, I don't know. It can be acquired by getting the batches of multiple classes. Here I wrote at least five, but I have to change this. It can be less because there can be a smaller umbrella classes, but you need to have a majority of the classes under the umbrella class. Maybe even there are other hurdles you have to uh, gain. Like for elemental mage, you not only have to have five of the elements, you have to have them at level 25. Flora, the main character of my story, has the class Tinkerer. That's an umbrella class as well. And she not only needs some of the classes, I think four or three, but she needed to have inventions registered under her name because as a tinkerer you have to have tinkered <laughs> tinkered you have to have tinkered on a lot of things so inventions and modifications are needed to get this class umbrella classes usually don't have the five standard skills but they give out good bonuses and they are good for their combinatory potential because if you've got an umbrella class, you can make quite a sophisticated class tree. And then champion class, that's the king of the classes. All classes of a branch can be combined with this class. So how do you combine classes? This is the batch. Every player NPC monster has a badge. On this badge is the name, the level, the rating. The rating is represented by the amount of arrows coming from the level thing. Here uh, you've got an overview of the ratings. And you've got the class Energy Master. That is the root class that is shown. But if you stare at it in the game, then the class tree of the target is shown. Let's look at the class tree. So here we've got an example of a build, of a ranger build. You go to a class trainer for Hunter and you can uh, learn the five standard skills for Hunter. Yeah? Let us look at the Hunter. Yeah, so you've got um, 
aimshot hunting spree. I imagined it to be like those guys on the trains who shot widely at the buffaloes in America. <laughs> so just a spraying shot. Fame death I stole from World of Warcraft because it's really hard to imagine a defensive skill for hunters. I mean, hmm, what can they have as defensive skill? Uh, suggestions are welcome because I don't want to steal from World of Warcraft. Uh, movement skill, stalk, it's an offensive movement skill. For defensive uh, movement skill, like getting more range, you get this when you get marksman. Yeah, and signature skill is hunting horn, that's a group buff. So you probably want a movement skill to get more range if you are a hunter that focuses on ranged attacks. This is a build of a ranger who is not nature focused. He doesn't care to track his prey, he doesn't care about the woods. He just wants to shoot. He wants an animal companion, so he got tamer and a trapper for yeah, some traps. So when he learns hunter, he will see that it connects to the precursor classes. He won't see the successor classes. So you are going to the hunting lounge and learn hunter. Then uh, you get a class, you activate it. Then you see, oh good, I can connect these four classes to it. It totally makes sense that you get a class for ranged combat to get a few more skills. Or if you want to have an animal companion, of course you will acquire Tamer as well. So you have to find the class trainers for those two classes and class trainer for Trapper is at a hunting lodge as well, so you have a short uh, way to it. <laughs> and uh, Tamer is probably there as well. As, and if you want to have a few more skills, oh, you will take Ranger. So this is a typical build for a Ranger who want to do PvE content, like doing dungeons or going with uh, groups and it's not focused on spending much time in the woods. It's more focused on gaming. Yeah? But yeah, maybe you think good a bit more knowledge about uh, animals and their tracks would be all right. So um, you get tracker as well and the gray circle will get blue. So blue, the blue circle signifies that uh, you got the class and the gray uh, circle signifies precursor classes you have, you can connect, but you have yet to acquire. How do you know what the successor classes are to Hunter? Basically, you have to ask around. <laughs> or go to the forums, but the class trainer of the hunter can uh, definitely give you hints about possible successor classes, but you can't see it on your tab, on your class skill tab. There are classes you can connect to hunter, which you can't see as well. Yeah? This is the case with meta classes like pupil. You can uh, connect pupil or teacher to hunter or hidden classes. So this is pretty boring. You are in a world where magic happens and you are just a plain ranger. So let's make a build with some firepower in the literal sense. There are elemental classes for some of the warrior classes, 
Maxman is a warrior class. Um, Swordmaster is a warrior class. So you've got Elemental Shot, uh, which is the Marksman class combined with the Elemental class. So if you combine Fire Mage with Marksman, you get Fire Shot. If you combine Fire Mage with a Swordsman, you got Fire Sword, Fire Spear with a Spearman. You uh, get a picture. We've got Marksman as Precursor for Fire Shot and as Precursor for Hunter. You can only have one active class tree. So now we have to combine these class trees, these two class trees. And the rule is that you can substitute a Precursor with X its successor. So this is the successor of Marksman. So we can substitute the precursor Marksman with its successor Fireshot. This is the resulting class tree. We switched. Marksman was here. Marksman with fire shot. You don't lose marksman because fire shot is a successor with marks to marksman, so you still get marksman here, and you've got now an additional class fire mage. You can learn uh, the elemental shots or elemental swords or plates without knowing those two. So if this mage stuff isn't for you, you don't have to learn it. You have to learn only one. Maybe you are lazy and you won't do you won't like all the mage stuff. It's perfectly alright to only learn marksman and uh, the fire shot classes. And now you've got a fire ranger build. Congratulations! We now have a nice build for a Fire Ranger, but you can always get in the situation that you have to fight melee. There are a lot of possibilities to add some melee capabilities to it mainly over a marksman because it's uh, in the warrior branch and there are a lot of melee fighting classes. But let's say you are a gunman with passion. You want to do gun fu and not to carry around a dagger or an axe. It's basically the same procedure we did with fire shot. Marksman is a processor of Gun Fu and Marksman is a, a processor of fire shot. So we switch out this Marksman with Gun Fu. Tada! We could have switched out fire shot with Gun Fu and this marksman with fire shot, but it would be it would make no difference where the fire shot and where the gun fu is in the class tree. I mentioned that only one class tree can be active, and all its subclasses are active when the class tree is active. You can switch between class trees. But it has a cooldown and you can't switch in a fight. You have to be smart about it. But it totally can be the case that you can't connect some of your classes and uh, classes you like because of the passive bonuses or classes you like because they give good buffs. So you switch to a good buff class, buff yourself and wait the cooldown time 
and switch back. And this is primarily the reason why I added a cooldown time, that you can't acquire all the buff classes in the world and buff yourself through and then switch to your main class because you can do this with, with one or two classes but then uh, the first buff uh, runs out uh, before you buffed uh, yourself through with 25 classes. So I want people to be reasonable about it and to connect their classes in a good build, in a good solid build. I imagine that some people will go overboard or would go overboard with their build and yeah, do 20 classes, get 20, 30, 50 classes and do white builds and that's totally okay, all right. But that a build is effective and that the skills are effective you not only have to have the class for it, but uh, you have to have the abilities and affinities leveled as well. This makes acquiring too much classes not effective. The active bonus, which was mentioned before, is always a special skill. The active bonus not mentioned is all your class skills have an active bonus of 25% um, more and 25% more is uh, really much so the effectiveness got multiplied by 1.25. Yeah, that's quite a difference. And the effectiveness of the branch of your root class, the skills of the branch of your root class uh, got a bonus of 10%. Numerical values will be multiplied by 1.1. Good, so let's look at how you acquire classes. We are back at chapter 31, the class system, manner of acquisition, basic classes can be acquired without any prerequisites. So you just go to the class trainer and say, here I am, please teach me. Or another manner of acquiring classes is you learn four of the five standard skills by yourself. You can hire uh, another player to teach you four of the spells and to get the fifth spell for free, so yeah. <laughs> but it's of course cheaper to hire NPCs in the cradle. Most classes can be acquired at the first world, the first uh, gaming world, um, that's the cradle. Basic class. Visit your class trainer and you get it. Example soldier, the military takes everyone. Okay, the military doesn't take anyone, uh, everyone, <laughs> but uh, a little joke. Quest classes, you have to complete a quest for it. Hurdle classes, you must have attributes, skills or abilities or affinities or achievements or you must have X to get this class. And an advanced class is a special kind of hurdle class. This means you must have the precursor class. For ranger, you must have hunter. You can't acquire a ranger without having hunter. Fire sword only eligible for Swordmaster or Fire Mage. Fire Sword, this is the corresponding melee class for Fire Shot, and the same goes for Fire Shot as well. You must have either Marksman or Fire Mage. Hidden classes, they are not registered in the zone network. You have to get them by first finding the the master for it or maybe it even drops. 
there are uh, literacy uh, crops which contain classes. Hidden class doesn't mean that it's a great class, it just means it's hidden. Those things can be com combined uh, with the exception of basic class, <laughs> of course. So you have to do a quest for some classes. The class can have hurdles and the quest is given you by a hidden master. And it's even an advanced class where you have to have a special class for it. Priced is a quest class. You can go to a trainer like the basic class and learn all the price skills, but you have to be ordained by a special goddess, not a special <laughs> goddess, a specific god or goddess or higher power, and only then you are a priest of power X goddess Epsilon. All right, I hope this clarifies some points of the class system of the set we boss. The standard spells are of course not the only spells you get for a class. You get more spells with your class trainer when you have a high enough level in your standard spells. Further spells or skills are always dependent on the average level of the standard spells. These are tier 1 skills and tier 1.5 uh, skills you get when they got the average level of 10 and tier 2 spells you get when uh, they got the average level of 25 and your character level is level 25 as well. So it's dependent on the average skill level of the standard spells and your character level as well. What? 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 Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please, if you have any questions or comments, just mention it down below or in um, the comment section of my stories. Links to the story you can find in the description of this video. Thank you for reading and thank you for supporting this story and I hope you have a good time. Bye bye!